Hi, everyone. I'm Susan Anderson, a 28-year-old real estate agent from Chicago. Before I continue with my story, please like and subscribe to follow my journey of dealing with the most toxic in-laws you could imagine. Two years into my marriage with James, life seemed perfect. We met at a coffee shop where he was coding on his laptop, and I was preparing for a house showing. One spilled latte later, we were inseparable. Our wedding was beautiful, and I thought I had hit the jackpot with my in-laws, too. Welcome to the family, darling. Victoria, my mother-in-law, had hugged me warmly at our first dinner together. Her daughter Ashley was there, too, all smiles and designer clothes, working at her mom's investment firm. You and I are going to be best friends, Ashley had said, but something in her eyes didn't match her smile. I remember telling my best friend Rachel about it over lunch. Girl, something feels off about them, Rachel said, stirring her iced tea. The way Victoria keeps bringing up Ashley's accomplishments every time you mention your work. Come on, she's just proud of her daughter. I defended them back then. How naive I was. Susan, you closed another deal? That's wonderful. You know, Ashley just managed a million-dollar portfolio last week became Victoria's standard response to any of my successes. Then came the best news. I was pregnant. James was over the moon. We're having a baby. He picked me up and spun me around in our kitchen. Hey, I just listed a five-bedroom in Lincoln Park, my colleague Mike mentioned during our team meeting. Perfect for your growing family. But things started getting weird after the pregnancy announcement. Ashley began dropping by our house unannounced. Oh, I was just in the neighborhood, she'd say, always when James was working from home. Brother dearest, want to grab coffee? I noticed Victoria's social media posts changing too. Photos of Ashley with captions like, My beautiful daughter who'll make an amazing mother someday, started appearing more frequently. During Sunday dinners, Victoria would direct all conversations toward Ashley. Remember when Ashley won that baby competition? She was the most beautiful baby in Chicago. James, honey, Ashley's new condo is just three blocks from your office. Isn't that convenient? Victoria would say, ignoring my presence completely. One evening, while James was working late, Rachel came over. Susan, I saw Ashley at your house yesterday when you were showing properties. What? She wasn't supposed to have a key. That's not normal, Susan. Something's not right here. I tried brushing it off, but the signs were becoming clearer. The way Victoria would accidentally exclude me from family photos, how Ashley would touch James's arm while laughing at his jokes, those long stares at my growing belly. Just wait until the baby shower, Mike warned during our coffee break. That's when mother-in-laws really show their true colors. Little did I know then, but Mike's warning was just the tip of the iceberg. The perfect life I thought I had was about to turn into a nightmare that would test every ounce of my strength. I'll never forget that day at Victoria's house. The words hit me like a physical blow. You need to terminate this pregnancy. Ashley deserves to have the first grandchild. She was supposed to be with James anyway before you came along. I stood there, hand protectively over my bump. Excuse me? Don't act surprised. James and Ashley were perfect for each other. Our plan was going smoothly until you showed up at that coffee shop. It wasn't supposed to be you. I rushed home crying, calling Rachel. You won't believe what just happened. Record everything from now on, Rachel advised. Your phone has a voice memo app. Use it. Things got worse. James started coming home later and later. Just busy with a new project, he'd mumble, barely looking at me. One night while he was showering, his phone kept buzzing. Messages from Ashley popping up. Miss our coffee dates. Remember that night before he met her? We could have been so good together. My hands shook as I scrolled through months of messages. Nothing explicitly crossing lines, but enough to make my stomach turn. At the next family gathering, I overheard Victoria talking to James's aunt. Poor Susan. The pregnancy hormones are making her so unstable. She's been imagining things, getting paranoid. I'm worried about the baby. Did you hear about Susan? Another client called my office. I heard she's having mental issues. Maybe we should list with someone else. Rachel jumped into action. 
My cousin works at the SEC. Let me make some calls about Victoria's company. While showing a house to potential buyers, I overheard Ashley on the phone in the driveway. Yes, make sure those offers fall through. Susan can't keep closing deals in her condition. Something's fishy with their company records, Rachel reported back. Look at these transactions. Examining the documents, my real estate experience kicked in. Properties bought and sold at suspicious prices. Money moving between shell companies. Watch this. I played a recording for Rachel. Victoria's voice crystal clear. Move another million through the Cayman account. Ashley, change those transaction dates. Keep playing dumb, Rachel advised. Let them think they're winning. That night, James was distant again. Mom thinks maybe you should take a break from work. Really? Did Ashley suggest that during your coffee dates? His head snapped up. What? Oh, you know, the ones she keeps texting you about, the ones you never mentioned. Susan, it's not. Save it. I've seen the messages. All of them. His face went pale. They're not what you think. What about your mom's demands? That I should abort our baby because Ashley deserves to have the first grandchild? She what? Finally, a real reaction. Maybe there was hope for James after all. But I wasn't counting on it. I had evidence to gather and a plan was forming in my mind. They wanted to play dirty? They had no idea who they were messing with. The pieces started falling into place when Linda, Victoria's former accountant, contacted me. I saw your name in the system. You're James's wife, right? We need to talk. Over coffee, she laid out years of financial documents. Victoria's been running a massive tax fraud scheme. Those property deals? All money laundering. Ashley helps her falsify the records. The SEC would love this, I said, photographing everything with trembling hands. Then Victoria made her big mistake. She showed up at our house hysterical. James, your wife is trying to destroy our family. She's been digging into the company. She needs to go. James just stared as his mother ranted. If she doesn't leave, I'll make sure she never works in real estate again. That baby doesn't deserve our family name. Mom, stop, James finally snapped. This is my wife, my child. Don't be stupid. Ashley was always meant for you. Ask her about the night before you met Susan. James turned to me confused. I pulled out my phone, played the recordings, his mother demanding I abort, the conversations about Ashley being meant for him. There's more, I said. Mike, tell him what happened. Mike stepped out from the kitchen. Your mother offered me $50,000 to fire Susan and destroy her reputation. You did what? James was shaking. Victoria's phone rang. Ashley, what? No, don't call an ambulance. My heart. James, I need you. Stop it, Mom. We know about the other wives, too. That got her attention. Linda had told us everything. Three other marriages Victoria had destroyed, daughters-in-law driven away so Ashley could have a chance with their husbands. Found this in the company records. I showed James the transfers. Your mom paid private investigators to harass them until they left. Victoria switched tactics. James, baby, you're all I have. Ashley needs you. I'm not feeling well. Save it. James grabbed my hand. We have proof of everything. The fraud, the harassment, the bribes. You ungrateful little... Victoria lunged at me, but James stepped between us. We're done, he said. Don't contact us again. Later that night, Linda brought more files. Signs everything dates back five years. Ashley's signature is on half of these fraudulent documents. All this because she wanted James for Ashley? Victoria is obsessed with controlling her children's lives. Ashley's just as bad. She actually believes she deserves everything she wants. James held me close. I'm so sorry. I had no idea. All those late nights, the coffee meetings with Ashley. She was pumping me for information about our accounts, our schedule. I know. But now we have everything we need. Rachel burst in. You won't believe what I just found. Victoria's been embezzling from her investors, too. My cousin at the SEC is freaking out over these documents. James kissed my forehead. What's the plan? We wait, I smiled. The spider's about to get caught in her own web. That night, watching James organizes our evidence, I felt our baby kick. 
We were finally free of Victoria's manipulation. But more importantly, we had proof of every illegal thing she'd ever done. The best revenge wouldn't come from me at all. It would come from her own actions catching up with her. Breaking news. Local investment firm under federal investigation for massive tax fraud. The news anchor's voice filled our living room as I cradled Emma, my three-month-old daughter. Someone had tipped off the IRS. Wasn't me. I was too busy giving birth to my perfect baby girl. Karma works in mysterious ways. Federal agents raided the offices today. The footage showed Victoria being escorted out, mascara running down her face. Ashley trailing behind, clutching her designer bag, looking shell-shocked. Is this real? James handed me my tea, eyes glued to the screen. Multiple counts of tax evasion, money laundering, and investor fraud? The charges kept coming. My phone buzzed. Rachel, are you watching this? They found everything. The investigation uncovered years of fraud, Victoria's perfect empire crumbling like a house of cards. Ashley's professional license, gone. All those fake documents had her signature all over them. Investment firm CEO Victoria Anderson faces up to 20 years. The headlines kept coming. One morning, moving boxes lined our driveway, a fresh start in a better neighborhood. Ready? James asked, helping me load Emma into the car. More than ready. The trial was brutal. Victoria crying about being a devoted mother, Ashley blaming everyone but herself. The judge wasn't buying it. Fifteen years, James whispered, squeezing my hand as the sentence was read. A text from Linda. Justice served. Sleep well tonight. My real estate business exploded. Turns out, being the whistleblower's wife who helped expose the biggest financial scandal in town earned me quite a reputation. We want someone honest, my new clients would say. Ashley packed up quietly one night. Someone said she's working retail in Arizona now. No more designer bags or corner offices. Victoria's country club friends? All gone. Amazing how fast people disappear when the mansion gets seized by the feds. Mommy! Emma, now five, running through our new house. Her little brother kicking inside me due in three months. James wrapped his arms around us. Look what came. A letter from the prison. Victoria's annual attempt at reconciliation. Straight into the shredder, unopened. The firm's remaining assets will be liquidated. The final news report. I turned off the TV, picked up Emma. Who was that lady mommy? Nobody important, baby. Just someone who learned the hard way not to mess with our family. My phone dinged. Another closed deal. Top realtor in the city, three years running now. Remember when she wanted me to get rid of you? I whispered to Emma during story time. Best decision I ever made was ignoring her. Rachel visited with wine to celebrate my second pregnancy. Remember when this all started? Look at you now. Two babies. Thriving business, dream house. While they lost everything, I added, not feeling an ounce of guilt. James came home early carrying takeout. Mom's appeal was denied again. Good, I said, watching Emma play. Some people don't deserve second chances. Five years after Victoria demanded I end my pregnancy, I'm living the life she tried to destroy. My daughter is perfect, my marriage stronger than ever my business booming. Victoria rots in prison, Ashley folds sweaters in Phoenix, and I? I'm expecting my second child, closing million-dollar deals and living my best life. Karma really is a beautiful thing. What would you have done if your mother-in-law demanded you terminate your pregnancy because your sister-in-law was next in line for a baby? Would you expose their illegal activities, or would you handle it differently? Share your thoughts in the comments below. And if you enjoyed following my journey of standing up to toxic family members, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for more real-life stories about overcoming manipulation and finding justice. Remember, sometimes the best revenge is letting karma do its work while you focus on building your best life.